We are going to see how to fit a neural networks regression model in R using Keras through the train function in the Keras package. Keras is a popular high-level API for building and fitting neural networks. In the Keras package, there are several methods available for fitting neural networks. So when we search for that kind of models here in Chapter 6 on the Keras website, we are going to see several packages and among them we are going to find Keras. So there are a couple of methods from this package such as MLP Keras dropout and MLP Keras decay that can be used for fitting both classification or regression models while there are other methods like MLP Keras dropout cost and MLP Keras decay cost that are only used for classification. So we are going to work with these uh, first two models here on, on, on gray. So um, the first step would be to install the required package for working with Keras. Keras is available on the Chrome website, so we can just run install the packages uh, and then enter Keras as a as an string here, and that will install Keras and TensorFlow as well with other required packages. Then, after this is installed, you have to load the TensorFlow package and then run this command: install underscore TensorFlow, and that will install TensorFlow in your computer. It may be required that you have Conda installed, so try to follow the instructions that are given by this command. And then I'm not going to run that here because I already have those packages installed, so I'm going to skip that step. Next, we are going to see an example with the auto dataset to feed a regression model using these neural networks through Keras. So I'm going to load the required packages and import the dataset and then I'm going to convert these two columns, cylinders and origin, from numeric data type to factor data type and then we're going to remove the name column from the dataset. Next we are going to partition the data into training and test set. So we set the random number generator seed and use the create data partition function to well, create these two sets. 70% of the data will go into the training set and the remaining 30% will go into the test set. So to run Keras through the Keras package, then we use the train function and we set the method to, in this case, either MLP Keras dropout or MLP Keras decay. So I'm going to work with this method first. So there are several hyperparameters as we can see here that can be tuned and then well this includes also uh, decay and dropout while MLP Keras K only includes decay not and dropout so um, here we're going to first enter the model that we want to fit MPG will be the dependent variable so we're going to model the miles per gallon as a function of these other uh, predictors here the data argument is set to the train object and then we have to do some pre-processing because it is better that we standardize the continuous variables so we enter a list with the operation that we want to play in this case centering and scaling for the continuous variables displacement, horsepower, weight, acceleration and year we are going to do here a resampling we are going to apply tenfold cross validation we can run this to see the well the default values that are run by the train function for this method and then we will build upon that something to note here is that I am not running this code through parallel processing and just doing the normal sequential processing when we do that, when we run the code that way, we are going to see that R plots these charts where it shows the improvement in the minimization of the loss metric, in this case the mean square error, through the iterations. By default, R is running here 10 epochs, so that's kind of 10 iterations. And we see how through those 10 iterations, the well, the, the code is trying to improve the models. Okay, so this was finished after some six minutes. Let's take a look at the results. We see here that, uh, well, 
in the default values train has tried nine combinations for these two hyperparameters size and dropout and for the other hyperparameters it just kept values constant for example for batch size the the value was kept constant at night two and same same for other hyperparameters then we are we are seeing here that well this root mean square error is quite high actually this is not doing well from previous lessons we have seen that this can be reduced to some two or three points so um, we could improve this output that we are getting here so one way to improve that would be first to parallelize the processing in that way we would uh, register the parallel backend with these two lines of code next well we can set the random number generator seed again and then we are going to include some modifications here for example we could increase the number of iterations that are run here this epochs argument so instead of running just 10 we can do let's say a hundred or a thousand second we could change um, these uh, arguments in the train control function to conduct an extensive search of the hyperparameters but doing it in a random way not using a systematic grid we could enter our own tuning grid but here we could try just to set this argument search to random and this will create a set of numbers and combinations of hyperparameters with a given length here we can set that length of the tuning grid so by default the train function only tried nine combinations here we could try a hundred combinations of hyperparameters and this could be helpful especially when we are not sure about what kind of values we should enter for these hyperparameters so this could be of great help for solving that question so we are going to run this and we will see if the results are improved okay so we are going to see only these graphics changing for the very last models also we can note that uh, the most of the reduction in the root mean square error or mean square error here which is the loss metric is achieved in the very first iterations all right so this has finished in some nine minutes ten minutes so let's take a look at the results now we see here that we are evaluating a greater number of combinations for the hyperparameters we have the size size is the number of units in the hidden layer something important to note here is that these models that we are trying only have one hidden layer and this size will be the number of units in that hidden layer so for more um, complex networks we will have to use the chaos package on its own uh, directly without using the card because the train function in card only fits a uh, neural network with one hidden layer and we also have here the hyperparameters for dropout patch size the learning rate this is the gradient moving average decay factor and the learning rate decay factor after each update and then we have the activation function so we can see that we are evaluating here 100 combinations for these hyperparameters these are the values that produce the model with the uh, smallest root mean square error so this is the combination of those parameters let's find which is the best result we can extract the results from the output object and then we can arrange the data by the root mean square error and then we can extract the top row so in this case we are finding that the root mean square error is 2.7 which is a uh, greater improvement from just the uh, default values that were tried in the in the first uh, model that we fitted before so here this is achieved because we have a, a greater search of best values for the hyperparameters and then this is finding a better combination of those uh, parameters so after we are done with that this is the MLP keras dropout. We could also try the MLP keras decay, and the process will be basically the same. 
we again execute a random search for the hyperparameters we can try a given number of epochs and um, then the length of the tuning grid would be 100 so let's try with this MLP Keras decay method okay so this is finishing all right so again this took some nine ten minutes to finish and let's take a look at the results we see here all the combinations of hyperparameters that were evaluated and then we can take a look at the values that produce the model with the lowest root mean square error this is the combination of hyperparameters we can extract those uh, that row with those hyperparameters and the uh, metrics with the model performance using this code here so let's take a look at that according to this we are going to see that the root mean square error was 2.56 with this MLP Keras decay and this compared with the MLP Keras dropout so in the previous method the root mean square error was 2.71 so the, um, the second model that we tried this second method multi-layer perceptron Keras decay produce a better model so once we have chosen the best model then we can refit the model using the entire training set in this case we're getting better better results with MLP Keras decay so we are going to well update this code here so to do that training on the entire training set then we have to set this method for training control to none and then we set the tune grid with the best values so in this case those values correspond to this combination so I'm going to update that here so we get size, lambda, batch size, learning reddit and then the row argument decay and activation sigmoids and then we retrain the model okay so this is our best model we can print this output and you will see it's a multi-layer perceptual network with the weight decay and well here yeah, pre-processing was the standardization that we applied to five continuous variables when we have our model then we can evaluate its performance on the test set so we can calculate the root mean square error and then we can print that value in that case the, the error will be 3.05 so as you can see here for example the improvement is done most in the early iterations so something that we could try is to just uh, implement an early stopping that would help to prevent overfitting as well so to do that we would add this piece of code we have to set the validation split and then we can use uh, Keras callbacks in this case we use this callback early stopping we said uh, monitor will be the loss on the validation set for the patients that would be a value let's say we can wait for 10 iterations to see if there's some improvement or not on the loss metric we can try to run that and we are going to find a problem here as you can see this has been stopped after some 40 seconds because there is some error something is wrong all the root mean square error metrics are values are missing so something happened and the, the reason is that we are running this through the parallel processing uh, so we will have to restart the R session to restore with the default settings so this is run in sequential processing instead of parallel processing okay so we will restart R and then well we will run the first part of the code 
and then we could try to run this code implementing early stopping. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to reduce this to tool name 3 and uh, let's say, yeah, that will be fine. So we see how this works. Now we see again these graphics where we see the improvement in the loss metric, the mean square error in both the training set, this blue line is the training set, and the green line is the validation set. These two graphics are actually the same. For that first iteration it runs through all the 100 epochs, but here it seems like it may be stopped early, as you, as you probably saw there. Okay, so this has finished. Note that it took some eight, nine minutes. Uh, but here we are only running three possible combinations for the hyperparameters. So if we were to run that for a larger tuning grid, like a hundred of possible combinations for hyperparameters, then that would take a lot of time running it here because we are not running it through a parallel processing. So in that case, you would have to either set a GPU or rent a machine that has a GPU or you could use services like uh, Google Colab for running this code with early stopping and benefit from the parallel processing with a GPU.